Hey everybody, uh, this is Nero here. Um, just making an informal video, uh, no VTuber today, uh, just a project that I've been working on for a little bit. Um, I was actually inspired by uh, Thorgy's Arcade. Um, he has a series called Build the Roster. Um, his channel's really cool. I'll actually post a link to his channel. But the idea is um, a video about uh, games that don't exist yet, but how would one build a roster for those? For example, uh, what if we finally get a Capcom versus SNK3? Um, what if we get a proper uh, Marvel versus Capcom 4? Um, so one thing I wanted to make um, and was thinking about was what if in an alternate universe, somehow uh, we get a Suda 5-1 Grasshopper manufacturer versus Capcom. Uh, Capcom is always looking for uh, really great companies to do a crossover with. I think this would be a really awesome one, in my opinion. Um, you know, they've, they've done some weird picks too, you know, like Tatsunoko versus Capcom, uh, Tatsunoko, of course, being a lot bigger in Japan than here in America, but, um, they've done Tatsunoko versus Capcom. There's a Namco cross Capcom, not a fighting game, but, um, there, you know, Capcom has always been a crossover King. Originally, this idea started as a, what if we had a grasshopper fighting game? If we ever do get a Grasshopper crossover game, it looks like, of all things, it would be a badminton game. <laughs> Suda's been on record stating that. Um, there's actually, as of this year, uh, uh, 2022, there is a fan-made uh, version of the Grasshopper badminton game. Um, it was actually rich, released on itch.io um, by some very passionate fans. You guys should check that out, too. Uh, so yeah, I, and we may not get a fighting game grasshopper crossover, especially because of the nature of some grasshopper characters. But in my mind, I really do want that grasshopper versus Capcom game. I want it to be that Marvel style fighting game. So I put together a little presentation. I picked some characters. Um, we're going to go over the roster of the characters that I would love to see in a grasshopper versus Capcom fighting game. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get the video started and I'll be doing a little commentary on my picks and why I picked them and uh, what type of attacks they should have. And so I have uh, Grasshopper picks and I have uh, Capcom picks. So let's get started. But of course, before we start, this is a note, all characters and music belong to their respective copyright holders. This is a fan-made, non-profit video meant for entertainment purposes only. Please support all the original releases. Thank you. Welcome to the world of Grasshopper Manufacture versus Capcom. So a little information about my idea. Uh, this would be a 2v2, uh, 2.5D style fighting game. Similar to the Marvel vs. series. The bloodiest Capcom crossover game yet. This game would have to be rated M. Uh, possibly Sero Z or possibly Sero D. Uh, I don't think it would need to be Sero Z as uh, this type of game um, won't have uh, beheadings, basically. I know Travis is all about beheading characters and cutting limb from limb. This game would be bloody, but not to the point of like Mortal Kombat style, so I think uh, somewhere between a T and an M kind of rating, but would probably have to be M for America. Characters from both works of Suda51, Grasshopper Manufacturer, and Capcom will fight to the death. And a new mechanic that I would like to show off is the death blow after a match. Destroy the enemy with a devastating attack. For example, for our glorious uh, Travis touchdown from No More Heroes, uh, at the end of a match, uh, he would have his death blow attack. Uh, if you play No More Heroes, you know you have to swipe the Wiimote in a direction, so it would be like that. 
But of course, wouldn't split characters limb from limb or behead. You know, it would just be a very bloody attack, I think. And I've even developed a little story to go along with the game. Uh, just to maybe entice people that aren't sure about if this idea would work. Travis Touchdown learns of a rare blue and yellow death ball for the Death Drive Mark II. Rumor has it there is a special silver eye inside the world of the game, and if obtained, can bring someone back from death. After locating the death ball in an auction site, he brings it home and plugs it in. Travis, Bad Girl, and Shinobu all get transported into the world of the game. Travis finds himself outside the Devil May Cry bar as a familiar face approaches him. It's Dante, accompanied by Trish and Lady. Dante has already found out about the Silver Eye and tells Travis he won't let him proceed any further. Now, time for the most exciting part, the character picks. Now, for this video, I've decided I would like to see a lot of characters. Of course, um, this is just a fake game that, you know, just made up in my head, so we don't have to worry about game developers. We can put as many characters in as we want. But I tried to be a little bit realistic and do some good Capcom picks and some good Grasshopper picks that I think would really work well together in this world. What that means is for the Capcom side, uh, all the um, maybe childish characters, uh, Scrunklies, uh, we'll have to save them for this time, so no classic Mega Man. Uh, we'll have more mature characters on the Capcom side for this type of game, since it's going to be a little bit bloodier than normal. And I have a lot of characters for each side. Uh, of course, if this really got made, we'd probably have to pare it down a little bit, but um, I'm very excited. I have 70 unique characters all for this game, 35 for the Capcom side, and 35 for the Grasshopper side. So without further ado... Let's get started. Okay, great. First combatant, no brainer. It's got to be Travis Touchdown. He is the face of Grasshopper Manufacture. He is the face of the No More Heroes series. By far the most popular Grasshopper character. There was a rally to get him in Smash. We got him as a me costume, but I'm hungry for more. I'd love to see him be the main character in a crossover fighting game. Of course, he'd be equipped with his beam katana. And he would have very fast and fun style gameplay. I don't know if I'd want to introduce his mechanic where his energy depletes. It is something that you could consider adding if you wanted to add more depth to the character. Uh, maybe have him be able to charge the katana and it does more damage. But having it go out of energy completely, um, I think that would throw like new players off a little bit, so not sure if I would add that as a mechanic. What you could add, though, is for projectiles, you could have him shoot energy out of his death glove from Travis Strikes Again in No More Heroes 3. And he could have all kinds of attacks from those series. Uh, from No More Heroes 1, um, you can have him do the Cranberry Chocolate Sunday, where the screen goes black and white. Uh, that would be a very uh, cool special to add. Another type of special you could add is when he equips his mecha armor. Uh, full armor Travis from No More Heroes 3. That would be a great special. Have him shoot missiles out. You could even have his full green mode from when he fights Midorikawa. Uh, just lots of specials that you. There's a lot of variety of different types of specials. You could even have him call his mech from No More Heroes 2 if you'd want to have him have a giant mech come out and do some damage. But I think there's a ton of versatility in the character and design, so uh, he's a no-brainer for this game, and he'll be the face of the Grasshopper side. Okay, great. Uh, moving on to the Capcom side, uh, we have Dante. Featuring Dante from the acclaimed 
Devil May Cry series. It's got to be Dante. Normally Ryu takes the top pick for crossover game faces. Uh, as you saw from the cover art that I did earlier, uh, it's actually going to be Dante. Dante and Travis, uh, both from, you know, action hack and slash series. In some ways, Travis is almost a parody of Dante a little bit. If you've ever seen the initial No More Heroes uh, Wii trailer, um, you can kind of see Dante gets a little bit made fun of uh, in the form of uh, Helter Skelter a little bit. <laughs> but they both share red jackets, both from Hack and Slash series. Since DMC5 came out recently, you could adjust Dante's moveset to have it match that a little bit more. Even have his design updated to match his DMC5 appearance. But I think he would be a great pick and a great face for this game in particular. Okay, and back to the Grasshopper side. We have Henry Cooldown. Travis's twin brother. You can't have Travis without having Henry in the roster. So here he is. Got Henry cooldown. Also another versatile fighter. Um, lots of design inspiration that you could take from the games. He already has an energy ball projectile kind of attack that I think would work great. And you know his level 3 super already. It's his insta-kill from No More Heroes 1. Just imagine that even more cinematic in a Capcom versus game. And because this is a 2v2 game, you can have Travis and Henry team up on a 2v2 team. 2v2 team. Uh, just I think he would be a great addition to the roster. And, well, you've probably already guessed the next pick already. Yes, you've probably seen this coming from a mile away, but if we have Dante and Travis duking it out, and we have Henry in the roster, then of course we would have to have Virgil added as well. Virgil being extremely popular. Uh, he got his DLC in DMC5. He was popular in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and UMVC3 very popular character uh, of course Dante's twin brother so you can notice the similarities between No More Heroes and Devil May Cry already and just having these four alone honestly I could just stop the roster there and I would be happy just to have this type of fighting game but there are so many characters from both series that I would love to see come back or represented in a fighting game so we're not stopping there we got a lot more to cover. Dan Smith from Killer7. Killer7 was actually published by Capcom in 2005. It was actually part of that Capcom 5, which didn't end up being the Capcom 5 anymore after uh, Dead Phoenix died. But I think the best thing that came out of the Capcom 5, eh, it's debatable, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things. For me personally, it was Killer7, because uh, Beautiful Joe also came out of the Capcom 5, and uh, well, Res Resident Evil was also there too. Resident Evil 4. But, um, this game was uh, executive produced uh, by Shinji Mikami as well. And because Shinji Mikami worked with Capcom, I wanted to do a lot of picks that have both Grasshopper and Shinji Mikami. I wanted to have both the works of Suda and Shinji Mikami represented. So I'd like to have Shinji Mikami uh, on the Capcom side, uh, Suda picks on the Grasshopper side, of course, uh, because I love both of those developers. 
And, uh, oh, I haven't talked much about Dan Smith himself, but yeah, Dan Smith, I mean, badass, tyrant, in a three-piece suit, the Hellion. Uh, you can have his charge shot be a special attack, his collateral shot. Um, another attack I was thinking of is have Harmon shoot the enemy from off screen. Um, you could even make Dan Smith a spiral type character and have him morph into the other uh, members of the Killer7 mid-match. Um, that, that could also create some really cool moves. Um, but a badass character that deserves to be in this game. He's not only a Capcom character, he is a Suda character as well. So, he more, he more than anyone deserves to be in this game. And of course, we were just talking about Shinji Mikami. We can't have Dan Smith without Leon Kennedy. A theme that you're going to notice throughout the video is I tried to take a Capcom pick and match it well with a Grasshopper pick. I didn't do it for every single character, but in this case, we can have Leon Kennedy, and we can have his default gun be the Killer7 from Resident Evil. And Leon is a really popular pick. I think a lot of people have wanted Leon in a Marvel vs. game for a long time. Um, he always seems to get uh, thrown to the wayside in favor of Chris or Jill. Um, so I think it's definitely time. And give him his Resident Evil 4 incarnation. Uh, you can have him shoot RPGs. You can have Ada be his assist character. You can have Mike the Helicopter come out and unload a barrage of missiles. Um, you could even have Ashley as an assist uh, maybe come out and like hold the enemy steady as he uh, does one of his drop kicks or one of his suplexes into the enemy. So another character that highly deserves to be in this game, I would say. Garcia Hotspur. And we can't talk about Resident Evil 4 without talking about Shadows of the Damned. And as of this year, Suda actually has the rights again to Shadow of the Damned, so I'm very excited to see if maybe we get a sequel to the game. But another long-range fighter, um, he would use Johnson. Uh, Johnson could transform into different types of guns. One that kind of mimics a shotgun and shoots giant skulls out. Um, one that shoots teeth like a machine gun. When he does melee attacks, Johnson turns into a torch. And of course, his level 3 super. It couldn't be nothing else. It's got to be the big boner. Where Johnson turns into a giant gun. It'll have to be screen length probably. And have him destroy the enemy that way. Firebrand from Demon's Blazon or Demon's Crest and the Ghost and Goblin series. I'd like to have Firebrand represented across from Garcia Hotspur. I think this would be an interesting matchup because De uh, Garcia is tasked with defeating the, the demons from hell. And you have Firebrand who is a character who isn't necessarily evil. I don't know if you'd describe him as an anti-hero, but... He's a character that I think would pair well with Garcia, as Garcia would realize, oh, maybe not all demons deserve to be destroyed or are completely evil. Specifically, uh, this Firebrand, um, I believe Firebrand made it into MVCI Infinite, but I'd like to see maybe a little bit of a moveset change. One thing I would really like to see um, from the game Demon's Crest, uh, Firebrand is able to change into different types of gargoyles. There's an air gargoyle form, a ground gargoyle form. Uh, he has different forms that he can change into. I think that would be a really interesting addition to the game if we could incorporate that somehow. 
I really want to make it clear that this Firebrand is specifically the one from Demon's Crest and showcase that game a little bit. That game is actually, I believe, on the Switch Online SNES library. But that game is really cool and you guys should check it out. So I'm going to take this opportunity to straight up advertise Demon's Crest. Back onto the grasshopper side, Juliet Starling from Lollipop Chainsaw. Another character that I think definitely deserves to be in the roster. Personally, I have not played Lollipop Chainsaw yet, but I heard that a lot of people enjoy the game and really like Juliet Starling. And another character that Suda again has acquired the rights back to as of this year, 2022, so it's possible we could see more Juliet Starling in the future. But another character with a unique weapon, a chainsaw, and she fights zombies. And you can have her do her sparkle hunting, so you can have all types of rainbows and crazy screen effects. And you could even have her throw Nick as a projectile, how about that? Now, if we have one zombie hunter on the grasshopper side, well, you're probably know who's coming next. That's right, Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. Another Shinji Mikami character. I really wanted to get Jill into this roster. And having her, instead of fight Juliet, you could have her team up with Juliet to hunt down zombies. I think that that would be awesome. Maybe even have a horde mode where you can fight really weak zombies and have them team up, do their supers. And this particular Jill, I would like to you know, see them change from the Battlesuit Jill from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And I would love to see them go back to her stars design, uh, much as she was in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'd like to see them bring back that design, maybe add a few new moves, but maybe reference some of those old moves from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Mondo Zappa from Killer is Dead. I wanted to add Mondo because another versatile character that I think would work well in a versus game. He not only has his arm cannon, which can change into several different types of guns for projectile attacks. Uh, he has his katana. I think he would be a very, a very quick and fast rushdown type character. Um, again, lots of versatility. Um, and for his death blow, his finishing attack, you could have him recite the phrase, Killer is dead, and complete his execution. Um, of course, probably the Capcom characters won't get actually beheaded, but still references execution in his supers. So if we have one character with an arm cannon, well, you're probably guessing who the Capcom rival will be. Now, find a new rival. Zero from the Mega Man X series. It's a no-brainer. Zero has to come back. When making this list, I wanted to pick a lot of mature characters, and I think the most mature character from the Mega Man X Zero series is Zero, and now I understand why a lot of the times Zero gets picked in favor of classic Mega Man, because he does have an arm cannon, but also has his saber. Uh, sometimes uh, Zero is in those games, and he deserves to be, I think, in my opinion. I think he would uh, be a good pick for this side, for Capcom, to go against Mondo. Just imagine them fighting, and they're both shooting at each other with arm cannons, and then they clash, their sabers clash. I would like to maybe see Zero get a little bit of a moveset change. Maybe incorporate a little bit more of his Buster Cannon. So that he does feel like a good replacement for X. 
but it's X and Zero's gameplay combined, so he can still do charge shots, he can still use his saber. Maybe give him some more of his abilities and powers that he had from the X series. On the grasshopper side, we welcome to the roster Uncle Death from Let It Die. This character, I want to see him in a versus game so bad. He's got his coffin shaped skateboard, so he'd be high mobility. He could even use it as a weapon, maybe. It could be like a rush attack, like a dash attack of some kind. And he's got a golf club that turns into a scythe. A really unique weapon type that I think would be really cool. You could maybe have him do some slashes and then maybe beams come out, something like that. You don't get to see too much of death in action in Let It Die, but you can infer a few things. He's definitely ultra powerful as he kills the end boss in one hit in that game. The end boss, which you never get to fight because of that. But a really great character that I would love to see in motion. Okay, back over to the Capcom side. We have Lord Raptor from Darkstalkers. Or Vampire in Japan. But if we have Death. Uncle Death from Let It Die. There's basically a very jovial, wisecracking uh, skeleton. Very good natured. I think Lord Raptor would be a great pick for the Capcom side. Because Lord Raptor uh, is also... You know, very jokey, uh, kind of a funny character, but also a little macabre, you know. Uh, and he has a great super from the original series where he turns you into a basketball and then dunks you in his minion's mouth. Uh, it's the hell dunk. I'd love to see that in this game. Maybe even have him shred his guitar as an attack. But him and Uncle Death, just imagine what pairing those two up just imagine the antics that they could get up to over on the grasshopper side we have mokutaro shuriyabu his nickname of course is jabroni from the silver case the 25th ward i think this would be a very interesting pick as for a moveset, I think you may have a little tough time coming up with it. This game is a visual novel from Grasshopper. This is a sequel to the original Silver Case. But I would like to see Shirayabu and see what kind of attacks he would have. Uh, during his Boys Don't Cry chapter, uh, he has a lot of unique attacks that you have during the RPG battles. I believe he has like a knee kick. He has some attacks like Critical Rolling Thunder and all kinds of crazy attack names, so I'd like to see how those look in motion in 3D. But of course, the one secret about this character is that he would have a form change. Once he unlocks a technique called death filing, uh, Jabroni loses all of his hair, and he becomes bald. And he kind of ascends in power level. He gets very strong, able to destroy enemies in one hit. I don't think it would be one-hit kills in this form, in this type of game, but you could do something like a moveset change, uh, or just have him ascend and just become a little bit more powerful. Um, or you could just do a, an entirely different moveset, make him a little bit more serious after he death files. But I would like to incorporate his death filing as a technique that he can use. But besides his uh, melee attacks, he would have a lot of gun-focused attacks as well. On to the Capcom side, we have Ryu opposite Jabroni. That's right, we're picking Street Fighter VI's version of Ryu, as I think this is the most mature version of the character. Uh, we haven't seen him too much in battle yet, we've only seen a teaser. But I can already tell you that I like this version of Ryu a lot, and I think would work well in this game. That's why I didn't choose his Alpha incarnation, I didn't choose his 2, 
or four incarnations either. Uh, we're going to go with this version of Ryu. And if you really wanted to make some synergy with Jabroni, you can have him turn into evil Ryu with a form change as well. Depends on if uh, we want to do that. If not, we can just have him just be good old, classic old Ryu. You guys are probably thinking, where's Ryu? You can't have a versus game without Ryu. Well, he's here. We got him. We got him in. But just be prepared because I didn't pick a lot of Street Fighters. So you may notice a few characters are missing from this game. I did try to pick as many interesting picks as possible, but that means that a couple of staples are now gone. So um, if there's a character that I missed, I'm sorry, guys. I tried to balance it as best I could. But if there's a character that I missed that you like, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments below. This is a collaborative project and, of course, just a made up project just for fun. So any of your input that you guys want to input, just let me know. On the Grasshopper side, we have Kamui Uehara from the original 1999 The Silver Case. Grasshopper manufactures first game that they developed back for the PlayStation 1. I can't not put Kamui in the game. It would be really interesting to see what his moveset would be like. In the game, he's described as having a type of harpoon that he can shoot. Um, you can see in his character art, he actually has uh, two uh, almost like pistons, some type of uh, like gas release uh, projectile attack. So I, that could be like a projectile that he would have. Uh, but in the silver case, he is a notorious serial killer that the heinous crimes unit is after. So I'd love to see what that would translate. And there's been many versions of Kamui across the different games in the Grasshopper library. I'd like to see this incarnation, the original Kamui Uihara in the game. Across from Kamui, we would have Akuma. This is another idea that I had bouncing around inside of my head. Having Kamui on one side and Akuma fighting him on the other side, I think that that idea is so sick. I would love to see how that match would go. Akuma, uh, not much that we need to change here. Just keep his original versus series style gameplay. Really not much more needs to be said. But one thing that could be very cool is on Kamui, if you have Kamui have his Shangoku Sats attack, maybe change the kanji on Kamui's back. But if uh, Kamui also had that instant kill type of attack, I think that would be awesome. Maybe he learned it from Akuma or something like that. From Flower, Sun, and Rain, we have Sumio Mondo. Now, you might be thinking at this point, wait, a joke character? No, I wouldn't have Sumio Mondo be a joke character. He would definitely be on a little bit of a lower tier, of course, because he's just a guy. He's just a normal guy, pretty much. But I would love to see and incorporate Catherine into his attacks. I know that Catherine is his partner, but Catherine also has to be put to work. Uh, maybe he can use Catherine as a shield. Uh, he can hit the enemy with Catherine. Another attack that I've been thinking about is have Catherine open up and have the wires come out of Catherine. And you could have him wrap up the enemy in wires and have them become immobile. Uh, similar to Spider-Man and his web attacks. Instead of web, just replace it with the wiring from Catherine. So you could have him be a little bit of a gimmick character, but have him stick enemies in place, and then he could rush in and attack. Um, you could even have him be a little bit like Phoenix Wright from Marvel vs. Capcom 3, 
and instead of a courtroom attack where the opponent is on trial, Simeo is searching for the truth and he uses Catherine to do a code or input a number and then all of a sudden he's figured out the enemy's weakness and now he's super strong all of a sudden or he has a really powerful special attack where Catherine uh, downloads the enemy data or something like that. Just incorporate Catherine in a lot of his attacks. I think that would make Sumio a great character. And the reason why I picked this incarnation of Sumio as opposed to uh, Sumio Kodai. Objection! And of course, I just mentioned Phoenix, right? So I would love to have, opposite Sumio Mondo, we'll have Apollo Justice. I could have chosen Phoenix, but I decided I really wanted to go with Apollo. Because I really enjoyed Apollo Justice the game. Um, his character has been very good throughout the other uh, 3DS games as well. Especially, he gets a little bit more mature in Dual Destinies. Uh, this art that you're seeing right now is from Dual Destinies, where he gets a little bit of a, uh, an eye patch look to him. And his badass jacket. You can have him be very similar to Phoenix Wright's gameplay style. So anybody who was missing Phoenix Wright from Marvel vs. Capcom 3, have Apollo Justice show up instead. And you can even add some more attacks, like his Truth Bracelet. You can use that to pinpoint the enemy's weaknesses. And maybe raise him from just a joke character like Phoenix Wright was into an actual full-fledged character. Make him... A great addition to this roster. And another reason that I chose Apollo over Phoenix. I was re-watching the Dual Destinies anime cutscenes the other day, and I remembered that Apollo had a friend named Clay who was an astronaut. So Apollo has a very uh, intimate relationship with the moon as well, and it even appears in this cutscenes. If that doesn't make him an honorary Suda 5-1 character, I don't know what does. So add him to the roster, please. Apollo deserves it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, instead of Maya showing up as an assist, we can have Trucy show up as an assist instead and do some magic attacks. From the No More Heroes series, Bad Girl. Bad Girl is an addition that we have to have on this roster. She's a great character. She was an awesome boss in the original No More Heroes 1. And she was popular enough to get added as a DLC character for Travis Strikes Again. Of course, being brought from the dead. And Bad Girl comes back in No More Heroes 3. And nobody played TSA, so people are like... Why bad girl alive? This is now your advertisement to go play Travis Strikes again. But anyway, her new redesign looks great. I'd have her in her new redesign. Her special attack can even be her fake crying when she's crying on the ground. And it could be a counter super. You go to attack her and then boom, you get hit by her one hit attack where she beats you to death with her bat. And she even has some new special attacks from Travis Strikes Again. Where she summons out a giant rainbow colored cake. Now, find a new rival. And opposite Bad Girl, I'd like to add Frank West from the Dead Rising series. Admittedly, I haven't played Dead Rising, but... Frank seems like a cool character, and I definitely want to add him to the roster. He has a trusty bat, of course, as well. And he fights zombies, and he's in a mature type game. I wouldn't change too much about his moveset. But he does remind Bad Girl a little bit of Badman, so maybe you could even give Frank West a Badman type outfit. As I didn't have Badman in the roster, I think this would be a good pick that also represents Badman in the game as well. And we can't add Bad Girl without adding Shinobu. 
I mean, not much needs to be said here. Just badass samurai girl. There's so many attacks that you can pull from. She has a new moveset and Travis strikes again. Uh, she has an almost insta-kill type attack from the original No More Heroes that could be her super, and it's already cinematic enough as is. Absolutely deserves to have a spot here as well in a versus game. I think she would be awesome. Opposite of Shinobu, I decided to add Strider Hiryu, an original character from the original Marvel vs. Capcom game. A very popular character from the Versus series, and probably one of the most badass ninjas in all of games, not just Capcom games. There's so many samurais and ninjas that I wanted to add in the game, but I decided I couldn't pick anybody other than Strider Hiryu. One thing I would like to see, I would like to see a Strider Hien costume for Hiryu as well. I believe they had that in Infinite, but I'd like to see that again. Because Strider 2 is an awesome game. On the Grasshopper side, we have Notorious. From the DLC for Fire Pro Wrestling World. This was a rival character that showed up in this game. He was a character that fought Sumio Saeba, who was the son of the original character from Fire Pro Wrestling Special, Morio Smith. That game has a lot of interesting history, so if you ever want to check out a game that Suda Goichi worked on while he was at Human Entertainment. Uh, check out that game. It's Fire Pro Wrestling Special. But I'd like to add Notorious because we haven't had a lot of grapplers yet and Suda loves wrestling almost more than anything. So we've got to add some wrestlers to this roster somewhere. And the great thing about Notorious is he, it's not just this incarnation that we have. We also have an awesome new redesign that he got from No More Heroes 3. Uh, Notorious was kind of getting hyped up quite a bit in that game. And not only does he have sweet wrestling moves from the wrestling game, but we can also have him bust out his Akashic Cannon from No More Heroes 3, which is a giant proton laser cannon almost. Uh, it's a giant energy cannon that he busts out and uses to blast away Fu and uh, as other enemies as well. So, you can have him with his mask version show up. Maybe as an alternate costume, have his unmasked version. But of all the wrestler characters that I wanted to add, I wanted to add Notorious really badly. Now, find a new rival. The Mayor of Earth from Final Fight, Mike Hager. Of all the Capcom wrestlers, um, there is a couple to choose from, but the one that I think would work well in this game is Mike Hager. Because not only does he have the wrestling moves, he also has his pipe attacks. Uh, he doesn't fight exactly clean, you know, he's got a couple of weapons that uh, he'll bust out every once in a while. But also having a lot of cinematic and great uh, throws and suplexes. I didn't. I decided I would uh, avoid Zangief this time and avoid maybe uh, other uh, grapplers like Hugo and whatnot. But those are some other characters that you could consider adding to the roster too. But in my heart of hearts, I have to pick Mike Hagar, who not only represents, as he's already had an entry in a Versus series, but he also represents Capcom's beat 'em up affairs uh, from the original Final Fight. Okay, I'm so excited about this pick. Midori Midori Kawa from No More Heroes 3. One of my personal favorite characters that's been introduced recently. She has a really interesting history. She was originally introduced as a character from 
Red, Blue, and Green, which was a side story to the 25th Ward that Suter wrote. That eventually became a manga that was a pre-order bonus with the 25th Ward. And links the 25th Ward to No More Heroes, kind of making this whole multiverse thing. Uh, which is really popular lately, but has also been happening to the Kill the Past universe. And has been happening ever since Travis Strikes Again. But she's an awesome character that uses both fire and wind attacks together. And I would love to see how she plays in a versus game. In my opinion, I like her red, blue, and green design the most. So that's the version that I decided I would pick for this versus game. Opposite Midorikawa will have Tessa or Tabitha. Uh, she has a different name depending on the region. Uh, she's a character from Red Earth or Warzard, uh, which is a Capcom fighting game that came out on the CPS3 and arcades. Um, it hasn't, as far as I know, I don't think it's had a console release, but it is getting one very shortly. Um, as of the time of this recording, the Capcom fighting collection has not come out yet, but it is about to come out soon. And the game that she is from is actually going to be on that collection, Red Earth, uh, which is a really unique fighting game where you battle monsters and you gain experience points. But she is a wizard type of character and she summons all kinds of machines and swords and whatnot. So uh, Midorikawa also summons a lot of energy types attacks. And I thought that, that this would be a good character to pair opposite of her. Though both of them would have these types of projectile attacks that they could use to fight each other. On the Grasshopper side, we have Destroy Man from No More Heroes 1. I would pick the No More Heroes 1 version of the character, but he's been in both No More Heroes 2 and No More Heroes 3. But he already has a great move set. He uses a lot of electric attacks. He could use electric to stun the enemy, and then he could pick them up, do some suplexes. I would maybe make him a heavier type of character, maybe to have him be that kind of grappler character. Um, you can have him fly around on his uh, hook suspended from the ceiling. He can use his uh, destroy spark to electrocute the enemy and freeze them in place. And his destroy buster he can use as a projectile type of attack. And of course his destroy cannon uh, could be his super. And next up would be Leo, who is the main character from Warzard, or Red Earth. I think this would be another great addition to the cast. Uh, Leo has technically been in a Versus game before, uh, when Capcom made their Capcom-only Capcom Fighting Jam. Uh, he actually made the cut in that game as a Red Earth representative. And because the Capcom Fighting Game collection is coming out, which features a lot of Darkstalkers games and Red Earth, I think that this would be a great time to add a character like Leo, have him a, be a bigger type of... He's not necessarily a grappler, but he is a character that has a big sword and a shield. Um, and we don't have too many people using swords quite yet in the... Besides, you know, Travis, Dante, etc. Um, I think we could use maybe a few more sword characters, so we'll have Leo added. And he's also a character from a more mature game. Um, so with this game being a little bit bloodier, I think this would be a great addition. Holly Summers, another pick I'm very excited for. Holly Summers is one of my favorite characters from No More Heroes 1. I really just love her design and her philosophy. And just she's a great character and an awesome boss fight. And I think she would have a very unique style of gameplay where she can set traps, maybe have characters fall into those uh, pitfalls. And she could throw grenades all over the place. And she has a great attack where she can shoot out missiles everywhere that target the enemy. Now, find a new rival. 
opposite of Holly, we have Cammy. Cammy has been missing from Versus series games for a little while, so I'd like to add her back. Instead of having her Alpha series look, I decided to go with a Delta Red costume from Street Fighter 2. When I was thinking about Holly Summers, all of a sudden I started thinking about Cammy, and I couldn't stop thinking about what if Cammy and Holly were fighting each other in a fighting game. And after that, I couldn't pick anybody else but Cammy, and I really wanted to add her back here. Cammy, of course, being a little bit more of a short range character, with Holly being more of a long range or trap type character, I'd like to see how those two fight in one setting. From No More Heroes 1, Jean. Jean is a great boss fight from No More Heroes 1. Speaking of short range melee type characters, that's exactly what Jean is. She uses MMA fighting style attacks. And she's quick as lightning. She can almost teleport basically between locations. And not much more needs to be said, just a great character that I think would work really well in a Versus series game. A character that would be very combo heavy and very rushdown type, uh, very quick, and focused on melee attacks. Now, find a new rival. Opposite of Jean, we have Jury Han from Street Fighter 4. I think we should use her Street Fighter 4 look. And basically a character that's begging to be added to a Versus game. Her gameplay style is really great. She can kick out projectiles. Another dangerous type of character that I think would pair well with Jean. I almost don't know if I want them to fight or team up together and see what happens. But don't tell me you're not interested to see what would happen. From the Silver Case, Tetsugoro Kusabi. This might seem like an odd pick, but I think Kusabi could be a great character. Of course, we would have him use a gun for his primary attacks. I think there's a lot that you could do with this character. Maybe make him move slow and deliberately, but maybe be very, very powerful. Another thing that Suda has kind of hinted at, this is only in interviews, but they've been debating on whether or not to give Kusabi a mech of some kind in a possible 26 ward. I think maybe that would be a great idea for one of his supers, maybe finally give him his mech, his mecha suit. And just a character that I would really want to add, maybe even less so for his moveset, but more so, I just want to see him react to all the other characters. Uh, Kusabi has a very foul mouth, and basically, he doesn't have any reservations. He tells it like it is, and he says exactly what's on his mind. So, he would be a great character to put in this game, and just have him comment on all the other characters. Now, find a new rival. For the Capcom side, it's Captain Commando. Capcom, Captain Commando? We can't not add him. We have to add him. And if we're going to give Kusabi a mecha suit, well, there's already a police officer with a mecha suit named Captain Commando from Capcom's beat em up, Captain Commando. He's been in Versus series before um, and has been missing since Marvel 2. I think this would be a great opportunity to add him back. Uh, he has a really great play style, uh, almost made specifically for the Versus series. And with Kusabi being more of a, I almost want to say dirty cop or almost a little bit of uh, apathetic towards his job, Captain Commando being all about justice, I think these two being opposite each other would be really interesting.
from Travis Strikes Again, we have Mr. Doppelganger. I think that this character would work well in the Versa series. Uh, he's a very mysterious character who not only exists in the world of the Death Drive, but was based on a real serial killer. Not in the, our real world, of course, but in Travis's world. And he is a character that uh, fights with a very unique weapon. He fights with a short-range attack. Not a knife, but it's actually a uh, corkscrew. It's almost like a Swiss Army knife corkscrew. So he would have a lot of uh, knife-like short-range attacks. Um, he can also throw out his death cards. And he can also clone himself as well. So he has a lot of uh, fast and slashing type attacks that I think would make him a very unique character. Um, you could almost think of him as like a Vega type character for the grasshopper side. Now, find a new rival. And on to the Capcom side, we have Alex from Street Fighter 3. Originally, I actually was going to have Vega fight Doppelganger, but I decided to go for Alex because Street Fighter 3 wasn't represented enough yet. I think it's a great game that deserves to be represented in the Versus series. Alex has been in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. I'd like to bring him back. And because we're having a lot of wrestlers uh, duke it out in this game, uh, one of my favorite grapplers in Capcom's fighting library uh, should be added back for this game. So, would love to see him come back for this game. Also from Travis Strikes Again, we have Eight Hearts, who is the evolved form of Johnson, which is Garcia's gun from Shadows of the Damned. And Travis Strikes Again, you think you're playing one game, Serious Moonlight, turns out to be the sequel, Damned Dark Knight, to Shadows of the Damned, where Eight Hearts becomes the hero with Eight Hearts to block seven bullets. Eight Hearts is a great boss. He has a lot of projectiles and skulls that shoot lasers and tornado kicks and rider type kicks, almost like a Skullamania type character who I was actually considering adding. Although Skullamania is from Street Fighter EX, which is more of an Arika game, but anyway. Wanted to add Eight Hearts because he's an awesome character, and this is a 2v2 game, so why not have Garcia Hotspur and Eight Hearts team up and make a great team? Now, find a new rival. And opposite of Eight Hearts, we'll have Shenko, or Lele, from the Darkstalker series. Shenko would be a great addition because she has giant claws, she has all kinds of different weapons. Another character that, if we're going for a bloodier style, I think would fit well. She's a dark hero type of character, and is actually one of the few good characters in the Darkstalker universe. But since she's a dark hero, I think as of, you know, Eight Hearts is kind of a dark hero as well, so having her opposite of him I think would be a great addition. Plus, I just want to add a lot of Darkstalkers to this roster. I love Street Fighter and all, but Darkstalkers is basically Street Fighter with a little bit more blood and maturity, so I think Darkstalkers, and because Darkstalkers is going to be in that Capcom fighting game collection, and because I really want to see another Darkstalkers game, yeah, just the planets are aligning. Let's get lots of Darkstalker characters in this game. But I didn't want to add two men just to take up the roster. So we'll add just a few that I think would really work well. And straight up, I'm going to let you guys know there's no Chun-Li on the roster. I'm sorry, guys. I just couldn't add Chun-Li. I couldn't find a good spot for her. But I think Shenko would be a good replacement because Shenko actually looks a lot like Chun-Li when she, before she transforms into her uh, Jiangxi form, or Qianxi form. So let's have her be the roster, be a little bit of a replacement for Chun-Li, 
If you're really looking for Chun-Li, you can kind of get that with a little bit of cami, but we'll, we'll find a good replacement for Chun-Li lovers out there. Alice Twilight from No More Heroes 2. There's not a lot of No More Heroes 2 characters on our roster, but I did want to add Alice Twilight because she's one of my favorite characters from that series. When that game was being teased, uh, she was actually almost being hyped up as the main villain. Um, she was the only villain character showed off in the trailer. Uh, just a really unique character with a unique weapon, uh, which is a six-armed beam sword leg tarantula thing called Ashura Six. Uh, just a really awesome character that I think would also work well in the Versus series. She can prop herself up on one of the beams so she can get really tall. And she just has a lot of moves that you can draw from from No More Heroes 2. So would love to see her in the game. Now, find a new rival. Regina from Dino Crisis, another Shinji Mikami character. Again, we're trying to get as many Mikami characters as we can into the game. So why not have Regina in the game? Uh, again, admittedly, I've not played Dino Crisis games, something I should probably change, but uh, I know people have been asking for Regina in a versus game for a long time. So I think this would make people very happy. Another more mature Capcom game, so this fits the bill. She's a perfect candidate for this game. And you can even have some dinosaurs flood the screen as she tries to fend them off. Margaret Moonlight. I don't think we can add Alice, Alice Twilight without adding Margaret Moonlight. We can just add Margaret just for the song alone. Philistine. Such a great song. Let's add her. But not even just the song, just the character design is so great. Her scythe guns are really cool. Uh, just an awesome character that I think would work well. You can pair her and Alice to be on the same team. I think that would be great for like a story mode run. So, no brainer. Let's add her. Now, find a new rival. And opposite of Margaret, we're going to add Nero. From originally DMC4, but got really popular with DMC5. Since Devil May Cry is being featured a lot in this game, I figured we really need to add some more DMC characters. I think Nero would be great. You can have him use his Devil Breaker abilities. He can shoot his arm out like a rocket punch. And admittedly, have not played DMC5 yet, but I am planning to change that soon. But another character that has been very popular from that game. And let's add him to the roster. An out of left field pick, but I wanted to add President Shoko Ozora. Shoko is the main character from Liberation Maiden, which is a 3DS game. It's a game co-developed by both Level 5 and Grasshopper. And Shoko is the president of Japan in that game. And she pilots a mech called Kamui. And... Just being a mech user, I think, would make her a really great character. There's been lots of mech users in the Versus series before. Um, think about something like Jin Satomi, something like that. I would have her fight similar like that. You could have her even riding the mech if you want, but if not, I would have her fight similar to Jin Satomi. Now. 
Find a new rival. And, well, I just mentioned Jin Saotomi from Cyberbots. And we could add Jin, but instead, I opted for Princess Devilot, full name Devilot de Death Satan the Ninth. She's been in a lot of crossover stuff for Cyberbots and Capcom. Uh, most recently, she's in a new stage in Street Fighter V, a throwback stage, but she's also been in Puzzle Fighter. Um, she's been in some other Cap Capcom crossover games as well. And I think she represents Cyberbots really well. Um, she, along with her two lackeys, pilot the Super 8, which is an octopus-themed mecha. So I would have her either piloting her mecha or be outside of her mecha and have her mecha show up for certain attacks. Uh, maybe, if you really wanted to, you could even swap her to the Blodia and have her be a reference to Jin Saotomi from the Marvel vs. Capcom series. Back on the grasshopper side, Kaede Smith. Well, we had Dan Smith, but I didn't want to just stop there because I think a lot of the Smiths deserve their own spot. Kaede Smith has lots of knee and kick attacks. Uh, some from the trailer and some of her counter attacks are knee or kick related. Um, this could even be your replacement for Chun-Li. Uh, anyone who likes Chun-Li out there, well, we could have uh, Kaede Smith be your replacement. She's already got a blood-stained stained dress, so another mature character that fits well. Um, she also uses a pistol with a scope, so she can attack from far away as well. Just a character that I think would be really good in the Versus series. And another possible replacement for someone who may be missing, like Chun-Li, or someone who uses rapid uh, kick-type attacks. And here's an interesting pick, Lilith from the Darkstalkers series. Now you may be asking, well, why Lilith and not Morrigan? And honestly, I'm just going to say it. Morrigan has had too many crossover games. I think it's time to let Lilith have a chance. I know that Lilith is technically just a lesser version of Morrigan. She's literally just a part of Morrigan's power, given form. But... She, in my mind, she's almost just like the little sister of Morrigan, and she kind of acts like that way as well. And um, in the original Marvel vs. Capcom series, there's a secret Morrigan that you can pick that is a Lilith color scheme and plays a little bit closer to Lilith. So I would love to have Lilith be in this game as opposed to Morrigan. So we're going to have Lilith finally get into a versus game proper and finally take the spot for Morrigan. I'm so sorry, and I, I hate to do it too because I love Morgan. I love Morgan more than anyone. Well, not, not more than anyone, but I really do like Morgan's design. But I really want to give Lilith a spot for once and let, let her have a chance. Morgan, let Lilith have a chance. It's her turn on the Xbox. And, well, we just added Kaede Smith, but I need to add Mask De Smith as well. Because, again, Suda loves his wrestlers. And it's another Shinji Mikami character. And a Killer7 character. Mask, I think, could have his own moveset. I think he has enough unique attacks to have his own moveset. He could do wrestling moves. He's got his grenade launchers. And he has several different transformations that he can use. To the point where he starts shooting missiles out of his chest like a Toku character. He's perfect for this type of game. I can't see any reason why not to add him. Now, find a new rival. Another out of left field pick, but I wanted to pick L Stingray or L Stinger from the Saturday Night Slam Masters series. Uh, this is a game that Capcom produced that has Hagar in it. He is a combatant in that game as a wrestler. 
So why not have another character from that game and you could team Hagar up with El Stinger or El Stingray and have them form a tag team. El Stingray, of course, being a luchador and pair him opposite Maste Smith, who is also a luchador. And well, now we have two great luchadors. And I know what some of you are thinking. Wait, isn't there a more famous luchador from the Street Fighter series? Well, I could put in El Fuerte, but I decided I wanted to do another obscure pick, and I think El Stingray is way cooler than El Fuerte, and I wanted to get some Slam Masters representation, so let's get El Stinger in there. And the final Killer7 character that I would add to the roster, Kun Lan, the main antagonist of the series. Kun Lan could have a very unique moveset. He has the God Hand ability, which he can use to transform people into Heaven Smiles, which is like a zombie, an invisible, exploding zombie from that type of from that game. So you could have Kun Lan summon out heaven smile and do his bidding and attack but additionally you can have kunlan attack as well you can have him fly around all over the screen almost like wesker possibly and you can have him grab the enemy so you can have him have lots of command grabs and you could even have him catch people's bullets just like in the opening to angel or the ending to angel rather And another Darkstalkers character, Dmitry Maximov. Now, the reason that I picked Dmitry, he's very similar in looks to Kunlan. Uh, sometimes, I always just think Kunlan just straight up is a vampire, but before forgetting, he's not really a vampire, he just kind of looks like one. But I decided we'll go with Dmitry. And another reason I really wanted to add Dmitry is he has a very special attack. One of his specials is called Midnight Bliss. And Midnight Bliss transforms male characters into female characters and female characters even into even hotter versions. And sometimes just into a complete joke character. But it's a very funny attack that would give everyone a different model you could I know it would be a lot of work but it's literally a fake game that I just made up inside my head so it doesn't really matter too much sorry fake game designers but I want to have Midnight Bliss in the game because I want to see those female versions of the male characters the hot versions of the female characters and the joke characters in between because Midnight Bliss is awesome if you've never seen Midnight Bliss check out the Midnight Bliss compilations they're pretty cool Tokyo Morishima from the Silver Case. Now, this is the one character that I had such a hard time coming up with a moveset for him. I didn't know what to do for him. There's a lot of different things that we could do. Uh, one thing that's on my mind is having the spirits and ghosts that possess him come out and attack. Um, you could also have him incorporate red into his moveset somehow, which is his pet turtle. I don't know how he would do that, but you shouldn't throw turtles around, but maybe Tokyo does that because he's crazy. Who knows? But Tokyo, uh, I would like to add him to the game. I think he's an important character that I think deserves a spot on the roster. Making his moveset, though, is the part where I, honestly, I'm a little bit of at a loss on that one. So I'll let you guys decide. Maybe you guys can come up with a better moveset than I ever could for Tokyo. Now, find a new rival. But I do think we should add Tokyo because opposite Tokyo, I'd like to add Layer from Mega Man X8. Uh, Layer is one of the navigators that appears in that game, along with Alia and Palette. Layer, um, also has a crush on Zero, and I think that would be a great character to add 
Uh, we can we can finally add some more Mega Man X characters and have Layer and Zero team up together, uh, sort of forming like a battle couple. I believe that you can also unlock her in that game, and she uses the same moveset as Zero as well. But instead of just copying Zero as a moveset clone, let's give her her own moveset in this game. In Mega Man X8, you also unlock, I believe, a laser fan and a laser spear. So I think those would be great attacks. But she's also a navigator and com and e computer expert, just like Tokyo. So I think that's why I wanted to have her added into the roster. But it also adds another Mega Man spot, which of course, Capcom has been neglecting a little bit lately. Yeah, we got Mega Man 11, uh, but no word on Mega Man X9 yet. But I would love to see a little bit more Mega Man representation. We can't forget Mega Man too much, so let's get layered to the game. And on the Grasshopper side, Toriko Kusabi, who is an important character from Flower, Sun, and Rain. Here we have her and Christina, which is her pet crocodile. And I think it would be very funny and really cool to add Christina to her attacks. You could almost have her be a puppet type character, which Capcom has done a lot in uh, the JoJo series. Uh, you have stands that come out. Um, they made the JoJo fighting game Heritage for the Future. And you could have Christina maybe even go far away from Toriko to attack at a distance, or maybe have her be up close and help her defend. Toriko um, has also shown that she can do some cool soccer kicks, so she could be a kick type character. But I would love to incorporate Christ Christina, her pink pet alligator, in a lot of her attacks as well. And, well, we just mentioned JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, so I couldn't help, but I really wanted to add one JoJo's character to the game. This is the one character that, in my mind, if this game actually did get made, I don't think this character would make the cut. Possibly because of rights issues. Of course, this is just a fake game I made up in my head, so we don't have to worry about rights issues and whatnot, but I think Midler would be a great representation because... We have Street Fighter 3 represented, we have Red Earth represented, and the only CPS3 game that we're missing is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And one thing that I also enjoy besides Capcom and Grasshopper games, I also really love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Midler was chosen because she's the one character that didn't have a design, and Hirohiko Araki actually designed this uh, character design specifically for Capcom to use in the fighting game. That's why she doesn't look like this in the anime. They, she only looks like this in the fighting game. So I wonder, I wonder if possibly maybe Capcom does have the full rights to this design and they could use it without issue. That would be great. Then you don't even have to worry about it too much. That's why Midler would be my pick. Also awesome design and she has a stand type attack. And another thing is that her stand, uh, it's pictured here, it's the coffee cup, but it's a transformation type stand. It has so many cool attacks. It turns into a spear gun that attacks you. Uh, it turns into cars that fly up from the ground. Um, so just, just not only is she the character that would most likely get away with being in the game, um, but she also has a pretty cool attacks as well. So yeah, we could just pick Jotaro or yeah, we could just pick Dio, but no, I wanted to go for Midler. Because, again, I think because of the rights issue, I think this would be the easiest character to get away with that. Another weird pick for the Grasshopper side, but I wanted to pick Sundance Shot, who is the main antagonist of Flower, Sun, and Rain. He's a mysterious man who doesn't show off his abilities too much, but he does have a, he does have a gun, so he can have gun attacks. But he also has a silver eye, and silver eyes have also been known to give the users all kinds of different powers. Um, one which is, uh, well, a little bit of spoilers here, but we can't do, uh, can't talk about this character too much without getting into spoiler territory. But 
spoilers for Flower, Sun, and Rain. Click off the video if you don't want spoilers, but three, two, one. Spoilers. Uh, he is partly responsible for the time distortion on the island for Flower, Sun, and Rain. So what I'd like to have him do is a um, Killer Queen Bites the Dust type attack, which was, uh, this was the Namco game. But he could reverse time a little bit, maybe even get some health back mid-match, something like that. So he would have uh, time abilities somehow. Jenna Doma from Darkstalkers. This character was made for this game. He's a badass character who uses blood magic on all of his attacks. He literally summons out blood and absorbs blood, and all of his attacks are bloody. This game is the bloodiest Capcom crossover game. It's a no-brainer. He's got to be in the roster. Uh, I believe he just made it to MVCI, so there you go. Perfect. Add him. Shinko Kuryonagi, who is a character from the 25th Ward. Another mature character that I think would work well in this game. Um, for her moveset, she's got her pistols. So another gun-toting character. Admittedly, we haven't seen too much of her abilities, but we know that she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most powerful characters in that game, especially during the Blackout 100 endings. Um, she ends up getting the pounce on a lot of characters, uh, getting the one up on them. Um, she's also been shown in those endings to have a katana as well. So she's gun toting, katana wielding. Uh, she, I think, would maybe be a good replacement for someone like Trish or something like that. But she's got guns and katanas. Now, find a new rival. And. From Resident Evil Village, Lady Dimitrescu. One of the most popular Capcom characters to come out in recent years. Not adding her to the game would be an actual crime. It's so obvious. We have a bloody Capcom versus game. You have Dimitrescu. Dimitrescu add her to the game. She's got sharp claws that she can use, and she's got uh, her transformed boss state. Just, it's a no-brainer. We gotta add her to the roster. We need to add some more Resident Evil characters, and I think she would be great. Shinkai Suki and Yotaro Osato. These are two protagonists from the matchmaker chapters from the Silver Case, the 25th Ward. Now you might be wondering, why did I put two names in one character slot? Because I'd like to have this character, this character slot, a pair of characters, uh, we'll have them act as a type of uh, ice climbers. We'll have both characters on screen, taking up a single slot. You can have one be the main body and one be the backup attack. I think that this would be a great opportunity to add a type of character like this. And because, just like the picture shows, they're back to back. Sh uh, Shinkai Suki uses knives in his attacks, and Asato uses a pair of guns. And they're an awesome pair of characters that definitely I think would be good in this game and should be represented because I really like these characters. Uh, really underrated part of the 25th Ward. And if I had a choice between Suki or Asato, I just couldn't bring myself to separate them. They have to be together. And I will not stand for having them separated ever again. Now, 
And another pair of characters that we could add for the Capcom side is Akira and Daigo Kazuma. And we already know that this worked really well in Street Fighter V. Akira was the main character added for Street Fighter V's DLC. So we'll have her and Daigo show up together. Daigo shows up in most some of her attacks anyway. So we'll have them be a pair of characters that represents the Rival Schools series. Um, originally, I was going to put maybe someone like Edge um, or someone like Hyo. Uh, again, we need to pick mature characters that can handle getting a little bloody. But I definitely think that these characters could handle it and would represent Rival Schools, which is an awesome game that Capcom seems to be interested in maybe thinking about, possibly, because they brought this character back and she was really popular. So let's see what happens. Maybe we can get some more Rival Schools representation soon. Now for a large character. I wanted to add a character that would be similar in the Tatsunoko vs. Capcom game. It's a 2v2 game, but you can pick one character that takes up two slots because they're so big and powerful and they have super armor. In that game, you can either pick Gold Lighten or a mech from Lost Planet. In this game, I'd like to do a similar idea. Um, this one character will take up two slots. It's Sonic Juice from No More Heroes 3. Uh, Sonic Juice is a large robot alien type character who's a boss uh, who shoots out all kinds of water attacks. Uh, legendary water and a giant wave that comes crashing down on the enemy. This would be a really fun to control character, I think. Um, especially for uh, maybe those who may not be good at fighting games, myself included. <laughs> just like to take a giant character and just start mashing buttons and throwing punches. I think that'd be really fun. It's always cool to show off like a giant character like this. So, yeah, I think he would play a little bit similar to like Gold Light and something like that. Now, find a new rival. And for a large character for the Capcom side, we'll have Magnamalo, who is the primary antagonist, the primary monster that you hunt in Monster Hunter Rise. He's a fierce, evil monster. A humongous monster that you could control and have him fight enemies on the other side. And I had a little bit of an internal debate on whether to add Magnamalo or Rathalos. And I decided to go with Magnamalo. Uh, Rathalos may be a little bit more important to uh, the Monster Hunter series, a uh, much more popular monster. And would maybe be a good choice to have Regina and Rathalos in the same game so you can have Regina hunt him down. But I decided to go with Magnamalo because Monster Hunter Rise is very popular and just came out. And I kind of like Magnamalo's design a little bit more. But if you really prefer Rathalos, then I'm not a, like a huge Monster Hunter fan. I haven't played all the games. Uh, so if you really want Rathalos, then far be it from me to stop Rathalos from being in the game. You could easily replace Magnamala with Rathalos. Okay, now we're coming to the character picks that are very left field picks. I wanted to do some weird picks that I think would be really cool and just really interesting picks that, uh, you know, with the Versus series games, you have to have some mainstay picks and then you have to have some really wacky pick so i decided to go with kaido wataru nickname kamikaze uh from a manga that suda helped write kuriyami dance uh which has some really interesting history because it was sort of based on some of the scrapped ideas from shadows of the damned so maybe pairing up kaido with garcia would be really interesting uh, this would be another puppet type character, I would say, because you can have Chalia, his friend, uh, come out and attack. Uh, Kaido, towards the end of the manga, also becomes very adept at fighting. He learns how to use a knife, and he gets trained by Travis Touchdown in the manga. So another uh, thing that you can have is Kaido pair up with Travis. Um, 
And he's just a really great character, a really interesting design. You could even keep him in black and white if you wanted to have him be like manga accurate and whatnot, but a character that I think would be really cool. Gene from the God Hand series. Another Shinji Mikami character. I had to get Gene in. There's so many reasons why I could get Gene in. Not only because God Hand is an awesome game, it's hard as heck, but really fun. Just a wacky fighting game. He's basically a just an awesome fighting game character already. Um, another Mikami character. And he has the God Hand which is also something that Kun Lan has. So you can have Jean and Kun Lan duke it out. But a great opportunity to add a out there character that has been a little neglected. Tei Iori. Now, this is a character that uh, her game never came out. The game was Lily Bergamo for the PS4. Let It Die uh, was actually uh, was basically what Lily Bergamo turned into. So you could have her and Uncle Death team up, possibly, or fight against each other. But Lily Bergamo would be an interesting character because she uses all these bandages to wrap up the opponent. <laughs> And just a really interesting designed character. Uh, another Kozaki designed character. Um, but yeah, why not take this opportunity to add her to the Versus game and maybe bring her back. And maybe even she can finally get a game released. Now, find a new rival. And while we're on the topic of scrapped characters, we can talk about King Cobra who was Rufus's original design for the American character for Street Fighter 4. This character is so cool, and I just wanted to see him in a game so bad. Hey, maybe this is a chance to bring him into a game. Apparently, he was supposed to have a breakdance type of fighting skill, so I'd like to see how that gets represented. But yeah, King Cobra, he's so cool. Let's put him in the game. And now for a boss. There's going to be two bosses on each side. A boss on the Grasshopper side, boss on the Capcom side. Uh, and then a final boss that you'll fight that you won't actually get to play as. But this sub-boss is a character that if you beat, you can actually unlock them. So you'll fight Jess Baptiste the Sixth, aka Fu, who was the main antagonist from No More Heroes 3 intergalactic alien who escapes from the black hole prison and starts decimating Santa Destroy. Awesome design, awesome powers, awesome abilities. Definitely definitely deserves to not only be on the roster, but I think is powerful enough to be his own boss. And it could even have multiple phases. Just imagine Travis going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fu at the end of this game. And for Capcom, the sub-boss will be Asura from Asura's Wrath, another really popular character that should be in a versus game. His gameplay is basically these action-packed quick-time events, and the game is epic on a galactic scale. Definitely someone who should be a boss, I would say, and at the same time, also a character I'd want to play as as well. So. Why not make him a sub-boss that would be unlockable? A uh, really cool character who can grow six arms and get really powerful and is powered by pure anger alone. So, time to put Ashura in the roster. And now we're finally getting to the final bosses. These characters will not be playable, but they will be unique final bosses 
for each side. If you're playing as a grasshopper character, you'll face down Kosuke Kurumizawa. This will be, uh, well, this is a character from the 25th Ward, but this will be a character that you'll face at the very end of the game in like an arcade route. Now you may be thinking, why Kurumizawa? This guy doesn't look like a fighter. That's because we've never seen Kurumizawa's true abilities yet. He's known as, a, as an observer in the 25th Ward series, but we've never seen him actually fight. So I'd like to maybe see him say something like, it's time to stop observing. I finally have to intervene. And then we'll see his true power. I think he could have a moveset similar to like Orochi from the King of Fighters series. He would be a very powerful, almost a godly type of character. In the series, he can switch between an 8-bit design, a polygonal design, or like an anime art style. So maybe have him swap between all of these different art styles. Or maybe you can even have him be a reference to something like Onslaught, uh, where he gets like a giant robotic form at the end, something like that. And the final boss of the Capcom side, Yami from Okami. Yami was the final boss in that game and was this boss that would have lots of different phases and can transform into many different forms. Since Kurumizawa is this form changing godly type of final boss, we're going to have Yami, which is going to be very similar. I had a lot of debates on to who to pick for the final boss, but I think uh, having another Clover Studio type of representation was really good. I did want to put Amaterasu in the game, but at the same time, I didn't want to see Amaterasu get bloody and uh, beaten up and slashed and destroyed by the Grasshopper characters. So what I would like to have happen is have the final boss show up, and after the final strike, have Amaterasu show up and help you during the final boss. So Amaterasu will still be in the game, but as a kind of like a side character almost, not a playable one. And there we have it, folks. This is the final roster that I came up with. 35 characters on the Capcom side, 35 characters on the Grasshopper side, 70 playable characters in total. I tried to narrow down the best picks that I could, and I think that this roster is really awesome and I'm really excited. I would really love to see a roster look this great and fantastic in a versus game. But let me know what you guys think. If you like this roster, if there's some characters that I missed that you really like, or if there's some characters that are really hype about, you know, let me know. But we're not done quite yet. We've talked about all the characters of the game, but there's still a few more aspects that I'd like to discuss. Okay, time to check out the stages that our characters will be fighting in. For the No More Heroes series, we'll have the No More Heroes Motel in Santa Destroy. This is an iconic location where the final confrontation with Henry Cooldown takes place. I think this would be a great location because it shows up in both No More Heroes 2 and in No More Heroes 3. A place where a lot of important fights take place. Um, just an iconic location. Uh, I think it would be great to have the first stage uh, be located here. We'll have Travis and all the No More Heroes characters show up and fight on this stage. For the Devil May Cry series, we'll have them fight right outside and maybe even inside the Devil May Cry uh, headquarters. Uh, which is Dante's place of business where he takes calls. Uh, it's the bar where he works from, where Trish and Lady uh, hang out. Uh, it's an iconic location that's in the first game. It shows up uh, many times over the course of the series. Has a really awesome intro sequence in Devil May Cry 3. So yeah, this will be the location for the Devil May Cry series. The Hotel Flower, Sun, and Rain roof 
this will be a great stage that Sumio and Mondo can show off his abilities. It'll have a little bit, as you can hear, a little bit more relaxing soundtrack as you fight by the pool, but a lot of cool characters could show up from either Flower, Sun, and Rain or Silver Case and uh, just hang and chill out in the background. Maybe Edo McAllister can uh, be running around and helping people and would just give a different vibe of a kind of stage, this kind of tropical paradise type of stage. For the Street Fighter stage, we'll have the famous Suzaku Castle. This is a reused stage from Street Fighter 2 and has been featured many times. Bring it back. It's even got a moon in the background. It's a no-brainer. Street Fighter stage, it's perfect. The 25th Ward. This will be a nice dark stage with lots of cities in the background. Um, you can have all kinds of 25 Ward characters show up. Uh, you can have the heinous, heinous Crimes unit in the background. Just a kind of futuristic city type of stage. And speaking of futuristic cities, you could have the Central Highway from Mega Man X. I don't think this has been a stage in the Versus series, so I think this would be a great addition. People instantly remember the highway stage from Mega Man X, so this would be a great time to add it as a stage. Uh, I think there's a lot of nostalgia for the stage, so... Hey, I can put in a few nostalgia picks, right? The Almeida Intercity from Killer7. I thought about what kind of stages I could put from Killer7, and I initially was going to pick the Celtic building, but I decided I wanted to pick Almeida City. Number one, because I really wanted to put Almeida in the game, but I didn't know if I wanted to make him a fighter, as I'm not really sure how he would fight, especially since he kind of just basically just kind of shows up naked uh, during the last boss fight. So it would be kind of weird, so decided maybe we'll have him in the background. Uh, we can have the cult members cheering us on in the fight. Um, you can even have Clements drive by in his ultra supercar as the rest of the cultists cheer him on. And Almeida can uh, be almost like the announcer for the round. The Village from Resident Evil 8. This would be a great stage and almost I'm thinking of making it a two part stage. We'll have the countryside be the first part of the stage, but then it could transition to the inside of Dimitrescu's castle. And you could have all the werewolves and zombies run around in the background. Uh, just this kind of snow covered, uh, grim looking stage for the Resident Evil series, uh, which contrasts well with the type of tropical paradises that we've seen so far in desert levels and futuristic cities. The Tower of Barbs from Let It Die. This is a really interesting location from Let It Die. Um, you could use something like this for the background, or you could be inside the Tower of Barbs as you see different types of Japanese subway stations and architecture is all scrambled and mixed up because of this large earthquake that hit Japan in the Let It Die universe. And you can have all of the haters running around and killing each other in the background or something like that. And you could even maybe have a special appearance by the Jackals. Uh, Metro City for Final Fight. Uh, I think this was an awesome stage in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so I was thinking, bring it back, make it look mostly like this, just have all the enemies running around in the background, the police trying to get them under control. Uh, just a decaying city type of level that would contrast well with something like the 25th Ward or a Central Highway stage. The Union Hotel from the Kurogane Kingdom in Kuriyami Dance. Uh, this would be also a very interesting location. I wanted to include something from Kuriyami Dance, but I wasn't sure which location would be best. But the Union Hotel is this location that not only has been in Killer7, but also in Kuriyami Dance, and so many 
crazy characters are there, including Edo McAllister, but also uh, just Dr. Death Mask, and you have Akari could show up as well. It's just there's many interesting characters from Kuriyami Dance that could show up. Makai. This is a combination stage that would be representing both Ghosts and Goblins and Darkstalkers. So, this is a stage where all the demons from the Ghosts and Goblins series could hang out, but also you could have some of the Darkstalkers characters hang out here as well in the background. Uh, just this demon world uh, that would be perfect for Garcia to run around and hunt demons in. The Fire Pro Wrestling Ring. Since we have so many wrestlers on the roster, why not give them a great ring to just duke it out in? Uh, this is uh, would be a very similar stage to uh, like Little Max stage in Smash Bros. Make it similar to that. Uh, characters could maybe even jump off ropes, and you can see the audience cheering you on in the background. Tayo High School Roof. Uh, this is a great stage from the Rival School series. And I want to see the characters duke it out. Um, there's like cherry blossoms in the background. It kind of looks like spring. Uh, this would be a great stage for even characters like Juliet Starling to hunt zombies in. But you could have Akira uh, and uh, Daigo show up here. Uh, would be great for some of the younger cast members. The launch pad stage. This is actually, it would be a unique stage. The picture that I used for reference is from Street Fighter Alpha series, but the idea is that um, after you beat six stages in arcade mode, you go to a launch pad, a secret launch pad, where a secret rocket is planning to be uh, sent to the moon. Um, the moon is a very important symbol is is an important symbol in suda games but you'll actually physically go to the moon in this game to fight but to get there you have to steal a rocket ship in order to get there so it doesn't have to necessarily look like this but it would be some type of launch pad where you steal a rocket and go to the moon and so of course the final stage will be the moon and you'll duke it out. And there's already been a moon stage in the Versus series in the original Marvel vs. Capcom, so why not have that stage come back? Um, you can fight on the moon. And uh, maybe even save uh, Mega Man Volnut while you're there, so we can get Mega Man Legends 3 finally. Now, depending on which character that you play as, you'll fight the final boss in two different areas. In the Grasshopper route, you'll fight Kurumizawa Kosuke in Paradise, which is a fictional made-up location, but it represents the location that Midorikawa was transported to in the red, blue, and green manga. Um, here, you'll duke it out with Kurumizawa and finally defeat the Observer once and for all so that the timeline can get back to normal. And the final boss location for the Capcom side is Kamui, the Ark of Yamato. Kamui is a cold northern region in the game Okami, and of course shares the same name with the Silver Case character, so had to pick that. And Ark of Yamato is a spaceship. And so in this game, inside of the moon is the spaceship, the Ark of Yamato, and that's where you'll fight the final boss, Yami where Amaterasu will come and help you deliver the final blow. So the plan. The arcade mode story at first will have you on Earth. You'll be transported into the Death Ball, the blue and yellow Capcom special Death Ball, developed by Dr. Juvenile. And you'll play six stages regularly. On the 6th stage, you'll fight on the launch pad stage. On the 7th stage, you'll fight on the moon, and you'll fight either Fu or Asura there. 
And then, for the final boss battle, if you're on the Grasshopper side, you'll go to Paradise. If you're on the Capcom side, you'll go to the Ark of Yamato. And then you'll obtain the special Silver Eye. It's the special artificial Silver Eye, which is actually the moon. The moon will actually shrink down, since it's a fake moon inside of a video game. And your character that you picked will absorb the Silver Eye and be transported back to the real world. And then they can use that Silver Eye to bring back anyone they want from the dead. And that's where you'll get a special arcade mode ending. Arcade mode endings usually just have a, a couple of screens and a little bit of dialogue. So I think that'll probably be the same here. But I think it would be really interesting. You're not winning some Street Fighter tournament, etc. just for prize money or determining who's the strongest. You're actually on a quest to gain a magic power that you can use to bring back someone from the dead. So heroes and villains will compete not to just dominate the world, but to bring someone back from the dead. Who would they bring back? That's what I would want to see. Um, because Bad Girl was brought back from the dead in Travis Strikes Again, so what other characters could Travis bring back? What other characters would some of the Capcom side bring back from the dead? Um, that would be really interesting to find out, and I think that is what I would want to see for the endings. So, in addition to a typical arcade mode, what other types of modes would be in the game? Well, in Arcade, as we discussed before, there would be six fights, a sub-boss, and then a final boss. Each character has their own Arcade Mode ending for you to unlock, so lots of replay value there. Not only would there be a 2v2 mode, but we would also have a 3 versus 3 versus mode. And of course, we have to have Local and Online. And of course, we would have Rollback Netcode to make it a smooth online experience. And for those that are not very good at fighting games, we can have Training and Trials mode training mode so you can practice characters and moves since there's so many characters uh, definitely need a training mode and trials mode so you can find out what types of moves they have and how they combo together whatnot and another great replayability uh, feature would be killer quest mode this would be a mode that would be very similar to how the current spirit board works in super smash brothers ultimate or even something similar to heroes and heralds since there are so many characters from both sides that i wanted to add but don't quite fit in the game you can have some palette swapped characters represent other characters from different series and have them fight and maybe they have a unique ability. And then once you defeat that character, you would gain their ability and you could use that in specifically in this mode. You wouldn't be able to take this online. Um, so you wouldn't have like a weird situation where you have people hoarding cards and using them online. Uh, but it would be specifically for you to power up your own characters in an offline mode. Uh, where you go on an adventure and collect all types of different cards, referencing all types of different uh, Capcom and Grasshopper characters. And of course, I would love to add a gallery where you can check out artwork from the various games that inspired this one, and some uh, music that you can listen to as well. Not only concept art for this game that you're playing as well, uh, this fictional game of course that doesn't exist, but artwork from other games that came before, like Street Fighter, and Final Fight, and No More Heroes, etc. Those types of artworks. And one last addition, because I just couldn't resist, I'd love to add some secret moveset clones. Uh, this is a reference to the original Marvel vs. Capcom, where there are certain secret characters that are just palette swaps, but represent a different character. For example, there's a Lilith that you can choose that is a moveset clone or a moveset swap clone of uh, Morrigan. Um, there's a Gold War Machine. There's a, an Orange Venom that's supposed to be Carnage. Uh, so those kinds of characters. So I'd love to add, for example, just here's three examples right here. You could have a purple Travis to represent uh, Travis Strikes Again, his purple jacket and his death glove. So maybe this Travis would be more focused on his various death glove abilities as opposed to his uh, sword techniques. Uh, you could have Ken be a moveset clone for Ryu, get Ken in the game. Uh, it would just be Ryu with blonde hair and a red gi, but there you go, there's your Ken. I didn't forget him. And of course, there's Morgan. She made it into the game anyway as a moveset clone, 
So instead of have Lilith uh, be the moveset clone of Morrigan, we're going to do the opposite and have Morrigan be the moveset clone of Lilith. And I'm sure there's many other characters that you're probably thinking right now, who would be a great moveset clone? If you think of a great moveset clone, yeah, just uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, that's totally fine. Uh, I'd love to collaborate and just uh, make this game as awesome and as big as possible. So if you got any great ideas for the game, yeah, just hit me up and let me know. And another thing that would make the game really interesting is different team-up dialogue. Uh, various characters from the Grasshopper side interacting with the Capcom side or their own side. For example, you can have Sumio, Mondo, and Kusabi interact. Uh, they recognize each other, but not exactly. Uh, uh, Kusabi recognizes Sumio, but he doesn't recognize Kusabi, so yeah, that would be kind of interesting. Kunlan and Jean, again, they both have God Hand abilities. Hagar and El Stingray, um, they were both in the Saturday Night Slam Master series, so they recognize each other, so they could form a tag team. Leo and Tessa team up, because they're both from Warzard, so they recognize each other. Alice and Margaret from Normal Heroes 2. Wataru and Uncle Death. Uh, maybe Wataru recognizes Uncle Death as the Grim Reaper. Garcia and Ahart's really excited about that one. Finally, Garcia and Johnson can team up in a fighting game. And uh, Shoko and Hagar, uh, the president of Japan and the mayor of Earth. And they could talk politics. So, some more team up dialogue. Another thing that, um, just a few examples here, but if you have some examples that you'd like to see, just let me know. And thank you so much for watching. That brings us to the end of the video. I really do hope you enjoyed this. This is a little bit different from my typical types of videos. Um, I'm typically doing kind of like these live streams types of games, but I wanted, I really wanted to make this video because it's something that I really enjoy. I both enjoy fighting games and uh, grasshopper games. So I wanted to combine those and make this type of roster video about this type of crossover. And hey, if you like this video, you know, um, if you have the time, uh, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Every little subscription helps. Uh, we're currently trying to get to 100 subscribers, so if you can subscribe, that'd be awesome. You don't have to hit the bell, that's fine, no worries about that. Just if you can subscribe, that'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, we kind of talked about this before, but if your favorite character made the cut, let me know in the comments below if they didn't or didn't make it, or if there's some characters you'd like to see, some moveset clones you'd like to see, or some team-up dialogue. Uh, just let me know in your thoughts below if you love Grasshopper games, you love Capcom games. I'll be trying to think about what types of other game, uh, of the types of videos that I can make in the future that are similar to this one. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, and hope you have a great rest of your day.